My name's Elena and I go by Lainey Ganja in the industry. And this is Mindful Movement and Conscious Cannabis Consumption. We are currently on a university property, so we will not actually be consuming the cannabis at this point. However, I did bring um, other things that are from the cannabis plant to help show you the different ways that you can incorporate cannabis into your life, even without getting high. Um, so I did bring some hemp products. There's some hemp seeds. This is the, the actual heart of the hemp seeds, so they're shelled. And that's a really easy, um, nice nutty seed you can put into different things that you cook or make at home. Um, just something really easy to add to salads, soups, pastas, smoothies, anything like that. And if you didn't know, the hemp seed is a complete plant protein. So it's actually um, has all nine amino acids that you need to be a, a complete plant protein and it's a heart healthy protein. So a really good alternative to um, maybe some other proteins that are out there that are more, can raise higher your cholesterol. Um, so if you didn't know, you could actually survive off of hemp seeds if you had to uh, for days at a time. So hemp seeds are so nutrient dense that if you were stranded and had nothing else to eat, you could live off of a little bag of hemp seeds for a while um, and that could be a savior for you. So I always say um, if you're ever stranded somewhere or you have like an emergency pack, you should totally put hemp seeds in your emergency pack. Um, they're just very rich in vitamins and nutrients. And then I also brought a little bit of hemp protein powder. So again, another really easy way you could incorporate it into smoothies um, and different uh, recipes that you might have to get some hemp protein into your life. I also brought some um, hemp tea. So that is just straight up organically grown hemp from Brighton, Colorado. And then they bag it up in a nice little tea bag and they have different um, flavorings that they offer. The particular one I brought is spearmint lemongrass. Um, and I would love to just pass this around so you can start to smell it and awaken your senses. So herbal tea, you know, you can think of other herbal teas that might benefit you in your life. And hemp is the same way. And uh, when CBD first started to come uh, be a little bit more mainstream and be talked about a little bit more, I remember thinking to myself, okay, I know that the hemp leaf itself, like the CBD that's in the hemp leaf is not water soluble. So I thought to myself, well, why would I steep the hemp leaf if I know that the compounds in it aren't water soluble, they're fat soluble? And I was thinking to myself, would that even benefit me? So I did the ultimate test on myself and I used to very much have to rely on um, like over-the-counter cramping pills for my period. I had debilitating cramps to a point I would be like in the fetal position or I'd have to cancel plans or miss work. Um, and the last time that that happened to me was in 2015. So that has not happened since I've started to incorporate hemp and CBD into my diet and actually utilized it in a very intentional way um, for all kinds of different things, you know, whether it's irritability or nausea or cramping, um, you know, just like a nice little mood boost. So that's what I've been using it for. I've had such good um, balancing effects from it. So. These are just different ways that you can um, address your lifestyle and everything you can con everything you can consume, and um, you know incorporate more plant-based things into into your diet. The other thing I brought are some tinctures, and this is made from pressing the hemp seeds, so you can get the oil out from the seeds, and it's just as nutrient dense as the seeds are. So the the tincture oil is a cold pressed hemp seed oil combined with um, a CBD, a full spectrum CBD extract from the flower. So I love that tincture, it's amazing. You can put it under your tongue and it will absorb sublingually, or you could put it on your skin and help regenerate your skin cells or clear up skin irritations, um, or even like bug bites, scratches, things like that. Um, for the next stage of activating our senses, I brought so some things that we can use topically, but also in an aromatherapy type way. So I brought some essential oils here. And this all ties in with the practice and with cannabis, as cannabis is a very sensual plant. It can really increase sensuality, and that's not even from like a sexual standpoint, that's just all your senses. So cannabis can make 
you know, listening to music that much more exhilarating or dancing just feel that much more, uh, that much better. Um, or like the touch of the skin, you know, it just really heightens your senses. That's also why when um, maybe you smoke and then you eat food, the food tastes that much better. Um, so cannabis really ties into heightening our senses and getting into our sensual self. And this really can help kind of bridge that gap between the mind, body, spirit connection and just kind of align everything back together and, and provide a little bit more clarity and balance. So here I have um, three blends. I have lavender for um, nice calming feelings, um, can be good for anti-anxiety. And then I also brought some grapefruit. So this one's kind of more calming. We have the lavender for calming. We have grapefruit for more uplifting. So what I like to do before my practice is I might, whatever one I'm feeling called to, I might put that in my, on my wrist and do some nice deep breaths, or I actually might put it directly onto the soles of my feet. The soles of your feet, they're called the soles of your feet for a reason. They're actually a really great, um, absorbent field as well as a field to release. So you release a lot out of your feet just as much as you absorb. And this is why walking around barefoot and getting yourself reacquainted to the natural vibrations of the earth can be so balancing. Um, you're really, you're reconnecting your bare feet with the earth and getting back into that um, vibration of the natural earth. So I am particularly feeling a little bit of both to be honest. So I'm actually gonna just take one drop place one little drop right here on my foot. And the next one, I'm gonna place one little drop on the other foot. And I'm just gonna sit and connect with the soles of my feet and massage that in and, you know, just show my feet some love. We, we are on our feet, we do lots of things with our feet and sometimes we don't stop to give our feet some love. They support us all day long. The entire goal of this practice is to help return empowerment back to the people. Um, we have become very kind of disconnected and disempowered um, in the wake of things like um, industrialization of our food or, you know, the rise of consumerism. Um, and we tend, to, we tend to be advertised to so much um, that it can really cloud our clarity and cloud our sense of self and make us think that everything we need is outside of us when in reality everything we need we already have it's already inside of us if only we could clear the clutter enough to receive all the different lessons and messages that the natural world has to teach us the natural world is our ally um, just like cannabis cannabis is our plant spirit ally just like these oils and the different plants that they came from they're also our ally so um, Talking about mindfulness and consciousness, you can really bring mindfulness and consciousness into literally every single thing you do and consume. Whether it's being on your phone, turning on the TV, making a meal, um, driving your car, consuming cannabis, literally anything. And when you bring this consciousness and this heightened mindfulness and this awareness to why you do the things that you do and who you are and what you're doing, um, you can really return a lot of empowerment to yourself and clear a lot of the clutter of the BS of the more synthetic world that we're living these days. So we live a very synthetic, um, we live in a very synthetic world to the point where we always have like synthetic lights on us. We have the technology coming at us from every direction. Um, it's just really, really easy to get out of your center, out of your groundedness, out of your clarity, and it's really easy to get sucked into all of that. Um, even myself, I used to have a huge um, shopping problem where I was, I would get such a like high from shopping, and but obviously that high would always go away, and then you just want to keep doing more and more. It's just like drugs, like other different different things you can seek out. And ultimately, you're seeking it out to fill something like a void in you. Um, and so mindfulness and conscious consumption of everything is what has returned that empowerment to me, to where I don't attach these things to outside of myself anymore. Um, and I've also used these practices in trauma, it, for healing trauma and dealing with, you know, death and all the different things that we face. Uh, you know, life is like suffering. There is suffering uh, that in, innately and um, inevitably is going to happen, but staying in that suffering is a choice. We do have the ability to move energies. Um, even if something chaotic or horrible is happening around you, you can return to your breath, 
sorry, I just hit the mic. Um, you can return to your breath and that sense of self and clarity and really help you in this chaotic world. So the very first thing we're gonna do, since we don't have, um, we're not gonna be consuming cannabis at this point, but what we're gonna do is just return to our breath. And if you do enjoy cannabis, you can take this breath with you as you consume cannabis and remember this breath and remember the um, empowerment and stillness and clarity that it provided you. And pairing that with cannabis can really take, take that to the next level. So let's get um, nice and seated. And if you have some flesh that's in the way, kind of pick that up and move that out of the way. We're just gonna sit with ourselves. If you, if you feel like you want to kind of tune inward, um, you wanna place your palms down. If you more kind of want to like receive energies, you would place your palms up. So uh, whatever's feeling called to you, go ahead and do that. And we're gonna begin to do a nice activating breath in our belly. So it's very common to breathe shallowly in your chest, and we're gonna try to get that breath as deep in our belly as we possibly can. So inhaling through the nose, begin to fill your belly up to a point where it's like actually expanding and filling all the way up, and we will inhale. Pause at the top, and then activate the stomach to exhale everything out. If you can, we're gonna to try to do an inhale for four, pause for four, and exhale for eight. So let's try to do this together. Activating in the belly, we'll inhale one, two, three, four, pause, two, three, four, and exhale. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. See if you can continue this for one to two rounds at your own pace and getting as deep in your belly as possible. As you are sitting here and you're supported onto the earth, make sure you're lifting your spine. There's space in between your vertebrae. There's, you could put like a book on your head. It's not necessarily lifted up or down. It's just really nice and even. And that is one example if you did have cannabis, you would simply on the inhale, you would inhale, fill yourself up with the cannabis, take a nice pause, and then exhale everything out from your core. Returning to our core in this way is very centering, grounding. If you think about it, your first meal was in your belly, in your belly button, in your umbilical cord. So this is a very, you know, source of life area, source of life and energy. So that's one example. Then we could move into alternate nostril breathing, which is awakening both sides of yourself. So um, in these practices, we never want to just favor one side. Whatever you do to one side, you're gonna wanna honor the other side and do that to the other. So here we just did a, a whole belly breath, but now let's do um, alternate nostril and we will go ahead and make this symbol with our hands and we're gonna use the thumb to plug one nostril the pinky to plug the other. So that's like the mechanics of it. And we're just gonna plug and inhale, pausing at the top to switch and in exhale at the other side. Remaining on this side, now inhale, pausing at the top to switch and exhale. Go ahead and now do this flow at your own pace and find your own rhythm here. Maybe you find one side's more blocked than the other. Just use this as insight about yourself. And once you finish your last round of honoring both sides, just kind of sit with yourself for a moment and feel the difference that that made just by having conscious awareness to your own breath and slowing your mind and body down by doing this conscious breathing. And feel what a natural tool and resource that that breath is. You know, we can return to that at any time, no matter what crazy thing is happening in this world. We can find our own center and we can find our own clarity. 
So now with our nice straight spine and our, we're lifted and we're not like crunching down into our hips or anything, we're nice and supported. We're gonna take an inhale and raise our shoulders. So inhale, and then exhale it all away. And another inhale. And exhale it all away. And now begin to awaken the shoulders by rolling forward. Making sure to breathe as you do this, moving energy, any stagnant energy that you might have. And if you started to go forward, make sure you also honor the other direction by going backwards. So let's go ahead and move to um, a tabletop position. So here you're gonna want your hands to be about shoulder distance apart, your knees about hip distance apart, and you're like a nice little table, like you could actually set things on you. So you're uh, not too dipped or not too high, you're just nice and neutral straight. And the goal here is we're gonna try to pair our breath with our movements by um, doing cat-cow, and on the inhale, we will drop our belly and raise our chin. So inhaling, drop the belly, raise your chin, and do this nice, great stretch. And on the exhale, we're gonna begin to curl the chin, raise the back, and honor the opposite direction. So this is kind of like stretching the back of your heart. Sometimes we think of heart openers and forget to do it the other direction. So find your own rhythm here with the inhale, dropping the belly, raising the chin, and exhale, lifting the back, dropping chin to chest. And when you're ready, you'll just kind of come back to neutral, bring your toes in together, and we're just gonna fall back down into child's pose and really release that down into the mat. You can spread your knees a little bit if you want to, if that feels good. Really bring your chest to the mat. You've walked your fingertips out in front of you. Your forehead can be on the mat. You're really melting into this pose, melting into the earth that's supporting you. And you can then put your hands in kind of like a prayer position and then drop that back behind your head. And this creates a different sensation within this pose. I'm really feeling it, um, you know, under my arms, kind of like a nice uh, somewhat armpit stretch here. And feel free to come back out of that and come back to a nice seated position. You can move slow, meeting your body wherever it's at, being gentle with yourself. So we're doing everything um, in like a condensed version and we can't really do everything, but I had one more um, thing that I wanted to talk about. You can take um, a variation of this. Uh, you know, some people, they like their feet to be just slightly um, more hip distance, um, or if you need to go a little bit further, you can. But all we're gonna do is we're gonna squat down and um, try to keep like a nice straight spine. So it should look like this, so whatever variation of this you need to take. If you need to spread your legs a little bit more, if you need to adjust this, however. If you also need to kind of like sway a little bit, like maybe open up your hips, um, maybe open up, uh, work on kind of like your ankle, ankle uh, agility. So the reason uh, this position is so important is because humans used to spend a lot of time in positions like this. So this is how we used to go to the bathroom and this is how we used to forage for food and we actually used to eat food like this as well. Um, so in modern day society, we do a lot of sitting in ways that are constructive um, or like they are inhibiting the natural flow of our digestion. So this is why you have so many digestive um, issues in society and why there's a lot of like colon cancer and just a lot of different ailments that are like this because we do a lot of sitting in ways that um, just aren't very conducive to the flow of our digestion. Um, not to mention how shitty our diet is. <laughs>
pun intended. <laughs> uh, so uh, if you're ever ha experiencing any blockages um, or you want to just get that digestion uh, flowing, this is a great position you could be doing. And you can take different variations of this. Sometimes I like to open up. Sometimes I, I might take um, a leg out and I might kind of work on seeing if I can go back and forth between that. So there's different things you can do here to just really work on opening this up, getting it a lot more flowing. Um, and just a lot more optimally functioning. Um, so that's something I wanna talk about here. If you'd like, we can um, just really slowly raise our butts. And what you'll do is um, just come up one vertebrae at a time, real nice and slow. And as you come up, if you wanna go ahead and raise your arms and then just melt everything away to really complete our, that space, feel free. Alrighty, so here we're going to kind of like how we did with our shoulders where we were tensing up to release. We're going to tense our whole bodies by uh, bringing everything in almost like a little egg. So bring your knees in and just really tighten everything. Like just really exude as much energy as you can and then relax all of that and melt it into the mat. Exhaling, just letting it all go, falling down into the mat. And feel your belly rise and fall in the breath that we talked about. Deep belly breathing, filling your whole self up with breath. And go ahead and close your eyes and tune inward. And without actually moving and only bringing conscious awareness to it, just begin to bring complete conscious awareness to the entire right side of your body. Everything from your toes all the way up through your leg, your whole right side of your body, your right arm, all the way up through the right side of your face. And your whole right side is activated in this conscious awareness. And now take that same conscious awareness and begin to allow it to fill your entire left side of your body your left toes, your left foot, it's rising up your left leg, your left side of your body, all the way through your left arm, your left fingers, the left side of your face. You're feeling a heightened awareness just by bringing this consciousness to that area. And feel how powerful that is to bring such awareness. And feel your entire energy body activated in this awareness. You might even feel yourself vibrating in such awareness. And allow it to encompass your entire crown and it's emitting through and out of your body like a light beam is coming up through your crown and out the bottoms of your feet. And when you're ready, begin to raise your arms as if you're just reawakening for the first time, just waking up, feeling light and fresh and free in your energy body. And whatever side is calling to you, you can kind of slowly roll over to that side. Taking a nice deep cleansing breath here. Feeling held by the earth, by 
Mother Earth and Father Sky. When you're ready, slowly support yourself as you come back to a seated position. And go ahead and sit back um, as you were before, but whatever foot that you have on top, go ahead and switch that. Helps us create new pathways. New patterns, helps us be a little bit more flexible and less one-sided. And just begin to uh, place your hands to your heart center and bow to what you are grateful for. Whatever fills you with gratitude, any little thing, big or small, that you are grateful for. Take that gratitude and allow it to fill you up and give you perspective as you move forward and go about your day-to-day -day life and as different things happen and you know whether it's good or bad just remember your gratitude and what a gift it is to be experiencing and that there's no species on the planet that doesn't experience a form of trials and tribulations and suffering just to be alive. It is a gift just to be alive. And I am really grateful for all of you, and I thank you so very much for doing this condensed practice with me today. And that does conclude the practice.